Hello fellow watch fans and welcome to another video from me, Sir Watch Geek. Today I'm delighted to be in conversation with Liam Millar, founder of Millar Watches. Now, I'll be talking to Liam about the trials and tribulations of running your own watch manufacturing business, and we'll be taking another look at the production version of the brand new watch, the Scuba Diver. <laughs> Liam. Welcome Hello. once again to Watch Geek Towers. It's lovely to see you once again. And you, mate. I've been here a few times now. <laughs> you have indeed, yes. Um, so you've been in um, business with Millar Watches for roughly how long now? Um, probably about two years now. Two years. Yeah. Wow, that's very good. It was a, a lockdown project, as most of them seem to be. Ah, yes, I understand, yeah. I understand. <laughs> now, you've already had success with the the classic and the tool collections, all with quality Swiss quartz movements, which we can see here on your website. Um, I, un I understand that these are all actually made in Switzerland as well. Yes, they're made in a Swiss factory with Swiss components. Wow. Um, they're ETA and Ronda movements. Yeah, yeah, very it was good. Just the ones we could get hold of at the time for. And was it quite a, le a steep learning curve getting involved with a manufacturer at the outset? Oh, massively! It's it's not my, my not my forte. I'm I'm an IT geek, so I can make computers sing and dance and that. But dealing with manufacturing is a totally different ball game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll come on to that again later with your latest watch. So, what was your inspiration for? Um, having your own watch brand? It was a friend of mine who said we were talking about watches and they suggested why don't you make your own and I thought that's stupidly expensive and I looked into it and looked into it and then took the leap. I invested money, spent a lot of money on watches because I collect anyway so I thought why not sell them to other people. Great, yeah. So you've got a passion for watches as well as you say, and so why not design your own and yep. uh, see how it goes? Yeah, it Excellent. was uh, a steep learning curve all the way through. Yeah, I can imagine so. And not happy to leave it there, um, your latest collection, the Scuba, is Millar Watches first foray into an automatic dive watch. Um, talk to us about how you came up with the design for that. The design was based on our tool watch and then tweaked slightly across the board. Um, the version one was produced with a polished case. Um, we, we sent them out all over the place. You have one, I think. Yeah. Um, they went all over the country and all over the States as well for some reason. They went everywhere. Um, <laughs> the feedback we got on that was people didn't like the polished case. Although now people are coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, we love the polished case. And I'm like, You're never going to please all the people all the time. No. So we took some of the feedback from that and produced the version 2, which, other than yourself, hasn't seen the light of day to anybody because I was furious about it. That's In what way was you furious? Was uh, it not what you everything wanted? Everything was wrong. Uh, the font on the, case, uh, font on the face is wrong. The actual face is wrong, um, they messed up the crown, they did everything was wrong. Now these prototypes, they're not cheap, are they? No, no. They're a couple of thousand each. A couple of thousand it. each. And and when they send you a prototype that isn't to your spec, you don't have any Oh no, there's no comeback. There's no comeback at all. No. You, you they've done it wrong, but tough tough yeah, on you. Basically you've got to then buy another pay for another one to be manufactured. Wow. Wow. So this so, was now dealing with companies in China to, to look at the manufacturing for this yes. one? Yes, yeah. we're manufacturing these in China because the cost of making it in Switzerland is astronomical. Well, I imagine, I imagine, um, yeah. And all the whole Swiss made thing is a bit of a misnomer anyway. Um, I think it's currently 60%. So 60% of the cost of manufacturing that watch is spent in Switzerland, then you can put Swiss made on the brand. 
we use Swiss movements, which are probably 65, 70% of the cost. So you can legitimately so say... technically, yeah. I could put Swiss made on the watch, but that feels to me dishonest, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I understand, yeah. Um, so we don't. We don't. No, that's fair point. That's fair point. Right. Well, before we go any further into the story, your journey, we'll do a quick run through of the specs of the new scuba. Yep. He's not focusing at all. Is it because the other one's in the background? It could well be, or it could be that I'm just incompetent. So what we have here is a 42mm diameter watch with a nice compact lug to lug of just under 50mm. 13mm thick, loomed ceramic bezel there. Domed sapphire crystal with internal AR coating and a Solita SW200 Swiss automatic movement. You see, that's page one done already. <laughs> and all housed in marine grade 316L stainless steel, which is now brushed. We'll go on to that in a minute. And having 300 metres of water resistance, which is all pressure tested, obviously. Yep. Um, but we were talking earlier, Liam, about um, the folly, if you like, of water resistance on a watch, and you was explaining oh, yeah. that the North Sea... Yeah, I think the deepest part of the North Sea is 205 metres. Um, and the amount of people that are qualified to go that deep is minuscule. That Most scuba divers won't go below sort of 20 metres. Wow. I guess. Yeah. Depends. Um, sort of higher grade professional guys or experienced really. guys will go a bit further but it's very rare a diver diver will go anywhere near 100 meters yeah so, and you, you also said that in the in the um, process of pr pressure testing and that you've had some of the into we've got a pesky fly bloody nuisance <laughs> You've um, had some of the components of the watch change to actually make the water resistance a lot better anyway. Yes, on the Mark I we had... Um... Just shoo that fly away from the top of your head, Lee. It's on your head. <laughs> <laughs> right, as you were, <laughs> you had the watch pressure tested. Yes, um, they pressure tested it to whatever we rate it to, plus I think they said about 20-30%. So it, it's been pressure tested down probably 350, 400 metres. Um, we don't do every single watch because that is stupidly expensive. Um, the other thing that some people have asked about is ISO rating. To ISO rate a watch, you have to pressure test every single one. Oh, right, okay. And it has to be done in their laboratories and that will cost you three or 400 pounds per watch. Wow, wow. So even the likes of Omega and Rolex yep. do not do that because it's prohibitively right, expensive. Right. I yeah. mean, we're not selling for the price of Omega and Rolex. No, of course. So we ain't going anywhere near that. No, no. But suffice to say, it, it's, it's, rate, it, it, it's rated to 300 metres, but in actuality, it would, it would it's, theoretically... It's the same with all pressure testing. They yeah. always go over. Yeah to give you that margin yeah. for safety, if yeah. you like. Um, the prototype stood up well. There was no ingress. Everything was happy. So on we go. Excellent, excellent. So that, that's quite a spec that we've talked about there. Um, and I mentioned that the casing is now brushed. Um, and uh, you, you... It's matte and brushed. Matte, matte and brushed. So, oh, hold um... on. Sorry, let me get my... Um... Let me get that. It's so easier we... to look at the bracelet because then you can see the contrast. The centre link is brushed. Oh, okay. The outer links are matte, uh, bead blasted. Right. Which right. is a matte finish. Yeah. That and is... we've carried that onto the case. So the yeah. top edges of the case are bead blasted uh -huh. and the sides are brushed. Okay. Okay. And we can see in there how lovely that looks. And uh, you, you alluded to the um, the changes that you've made from the V1 oh, there's hundreds. through <laughs> to the final one. Um, you had some great feedback from the likes of myself and other people who you sent the initial one to. Um, so run us through again um, the changes, if you can, between the 
the V1, which is here, and the final V3. Um, phew, right, so the main one is finishing. Um, we've then knurled the edge of the bezel. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've increased the size of the crown. Uh -huh. And change the finishing on uh, the the knurling on that as well. Yep. Other than that, oh, and the sapphire crystal is now domed rather than flat. Right. Okay. Which is a very slight change. But oh yes, yeah, we can see there the domed crystal. It makes it look a bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but there were some changes on the internals on the movement mounts, which is just to strengthen the watch. Okay. No one will ever see that unless you're a watchmaker and you take it apart. Yep. And the loom is now um, super looming over a mixture yes. of um, C3. The production loom is uh, super looming over C3 and BGW9. Lovely. So you've got your final design. Um, presumably then, um, it was straightforward getting a new manufacturer in China on board and uh, getting them to do everything you want. Uh, no. No, nothing is straightforward. Um, a, you've got the time zone difference. So when they're up and working, it's the middle of the night over here. And when I'm up and working, it's the middle of the night over there, which makes life totally nightmare. So it's all done via email and you've got to break it down. And then you've got the language difference, which is interesting. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I imagine. But we eventually got there after ooh, probably six months of back and forth tweaking bits, getting it all right, doing everything we wanted. We then pulled the trigger on the four prototypes. So we've got the four colours. Uh, there's black, green, red and blue. And the blue's not here today because it's in America somewhere. I can't remember where in America. It's in America <laughs> somewhere. Doing the rounds. <laughs> um, I can never remember where, where America is half the time. Um, that's beside the point. Um, and you also presumably needed a manufacturer that could work to the MOQs that, that you that's, needed as well. That's the hard bit, mm. because we're a very small company, um, basically paying for the production out of my own pocket. Um, and we're talking, most companies want a minimum order of three to 500 watches. Wow. Which mounts up quick. So you're yeah. talking 50 to a hundred thousand pounds before you've sold a single watch. Um, what I've managed to convince this company to do is produce the 50 for me, which have been paid for. So these are the 50 in black? The black ones are all paid for. They're on their way. They are, as of today, in manufacturing. Um, they will start to come off the production line probably the end of this month and by September they'll be here in the UK. Excellent. So um, the next step then, you've got the black in place being manufactured, as you say. Yep. So the next step was to run a Kickstarter campaign to fund the the other colours in the range as well. Uh, yeah, we've done Kickstarter slightly differently to most people. Most people put their idea up and then want the Kickstarter to pay for the production. Obviously, I've already done that. So the first 50 are ready to go and they will be shipped out pretty soon after the end of the Kickstarter. Um, what we've done is set it up in such a way where for every 25 watches we sell, we'll add another colour. Okay. Um, the first 10 of each colour will get the early bird price. Which I'll jump in and say that is the normal price for this watch is £499 for the first 10 of each colourway on Kickstarter, 25% yep. off, £375. Yes. For a Swiss movement, unique dive watch, I think is, is remarkable. It really is. And then after that, they go to 400 which is still 20% off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Th throughout for the run of the Kickstarter. For the campaign. run of the Kickstarter. So you've got till the 31st of August to, to jump in and pledge. Yep. First 10, of which there's still a couple available. Uh, well, definitely in the black. I presume in the, the other colourways. colours are not even on there yet. They're not even on there yet. So, so when, when they sell... become released, yeah. then the first 10 will be at three three £375. Yes. Yeah. 
I understand. And each watch is uniquely numbered as well with a serial yep, number. They're all serial so. numbered. Um, on the back of the production one, you'll see it's P P3 for the version three. The black one is 0003. There you go, you can see in there P3003. So each watch is uniquely serial numbered. And also each watch will come with its own three watch roll yes. as well. So it goes without saying that for the green watch, the green dial watch, you would get a green three watch roll. For the black, you'd get a black, blue, blue, and red, brown. Yes, because we couldn't get a red one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's nearly red. <laughs> it is nearly red, yes. No, I think that's great as well. And you're also toying with the idea of perhaps providing um, different strap options as well, further down the line. Yes, I mean, we'll, we'll have strap options at some point. Yeah, well, but for now, each one of them comes on this beautiful uh, bracelet. And yes. let's just video this as well, because they do have on-the-fly adjustment, which is lovely. So press those in. So you haven't got to take the watch off to adjust. There's what, about 18 mil of adjustment there, did we say, I think? Uh, yeah, about that. So it's a beautiful, solid bracelet, uh, which really does add... Old add to the quality. So if you're interested in one of these, I'm gonna look at the camera now. If you're interested in one of these, and why wouldn't you be, then head over to millarwatches.com and click on their link to follow the Kickstarter campaign where you can pledge for uh, the black initially, and then in due course, if you're interested in any of the other colors as well, they will become unlocked as, uh, as the time goes on. So Liam, it's been an absolute pleasure. We've actually become good friends throughout it's, this journey. It's you've, always good to come and see you've you. You've been around <laughs> a few times now. Um, and I, I think that anybody that wants to start and run their own watch company, well, I'm in absolutely in awe of because to keep on growing and expanding, now if I was wearing a hat, I would doff it to you, sir. Well, it's more stupidity than <laughs> it's it, it's been a long way and it's cost me a fortune. <laughs> but you you do it for the love. You you love watches. Well, I've got some nice watches out of it. <laughs> um, my mother has since nicked the version one red because oh. she fell in love with that when she came over, and it disappeared back with her. So she's now doing a sorts cough. She's got her scuba red on her left wrist and her Fitbit on her right wrist. Oh, excellent, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, now Liam's now going to take me for a spin in this. Wow. Now, I've been out in it before, uh, but it's now resplendent in a new green wrap, which looks boss, I think you'll agree. Um, OK, then. Butt cheeks clenched. Let's go. <laughs> incredible so exhilarating it's uh, amazing it's been a long time since I've owned a convertible it's nothing like this one <laughs>
Well, once again, thank you, Liam. That was incredible. Um, I haven't got the sensation back in my legs yet. Uh, beautiful, isn't it? Brilliant. Cheers, mate. See ya.